Hey, Matt, when you're in a college athlete and you are going to play a game somewhere, you would think the one thing that's important for you to bring is your blank. What would that be? Oh, uh, my gear. Okay. Be more specific. My uniform. Your uniform. I kind of thought you were going to say shoes because that was my first guess. <laughs> So Coppin State University in Maryland, the men's basketball team, they were playing Drexel in Pennsylvania the other night, and they forgot to bring their jerseys. <laughs> How does the whole team forget to bring their jerseys? Okay, I have a guess. Okay. One person or like a department is in charge of bringing all the jerseys? One would think. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe that's it. So Coppin State had to wear Drexel's warm up shirts. Oh. Because they had different numbers on them. The warm up shirts? Yeah. They had numbers on them. The warm up shirts had numbers on them. Yes. That weren't the same as. I guess it wouldn't matter because it's a different colored shirt. Right. If, uh, if they're the same numbers as the other team. Yeah. Wow. That sounds. What was, <laughs> what was the outcome? Drexel won. <laughs> I feel like when you start off wearing somebody else's shirt, like, yeah. this game is probably not going to go very well. But it made me think about packing for Christmas this coming week. Okay? Oh, okay. So when you're packing, you don't want to forget like the most important things, right? Yeah, yeah. Like presents. And are you, if you're going to church with your family, pack an outfit for church. And dudes, pack dark socks, right? That's a thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shoes for church, toothbrush. What's the one thing that you never forget to pack, Matt? That I never forget to pack. Never forget to pack. Hmm. Well, luckily, I have my backpack that is just designated for travel. And so it's got like my toothbrush. It's got uh, duplicates of my meds that I need. And yeah, just general hygiene products. So I guess those are always in, I guess if I were to forget that entire bag, I'd be hosed. Right. But I never forget those items, but I don't know if those count. Do those count? I, I think so. Something that I never forget to pack is underwear. And <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. And I yeah. think I saw something on Instagram or something about when you're packing. It's like you are going somewhere for three days, but you pack eight pairs of underwear because you're just not sure. <laughs> exactly. That's ex that's what I was about to say is I overdo it on packing uh, underwear and shirts. Right. But I'll forget like, oh, that dress that I was going to wear to the wedding. But good news, I've got seven extra pairs of underwear. <laughs> like that's not going to help me. <laughs> Maybe I'll help someone else. You could spring into action and help someone else who ever got their undies or soiled their undies or something, right? Right. If they're a right. similar size, at least. When you go to pack, what's the first thing that you pack? The first thing I pack? Yeah. Uh, what do I throw in there first? I mean, it's all clothes. Yeah. So probably, and I think honestly, I pack them in a way that makes the most sense for the bag itself. And yeah. So I think pants go on the bottom and then like shirts and then underwear slash socks would be on top. Gotcha. Yeah. You, yeah. You? Probably shoes than pants. Oh, shoes. Yeah, I yes. kind of do that. But I don't have a backpack. I have like a bag bag. So I got a little bit more room to make things work. But if you're packing for Christmas and going to be going to grandma's house for the weekend, don't forget the presents. <laughs> yeah, the presents are key. Yeah. Well, for sure, when I think about packing my bag with clothes, at least, I kind of visualize myself dressing in the morning. You know what I mean? Like, right. Oh, yeah. Don't forget that garment. Don't forget. Oh, and then this Apple Watch. I really like the Apple Watch. So making sure that I pack the charger for that. Oh, that is like the one thing I always forget is the charge cords. Yeah. Yep. I've, I think my, my first Fitbit, I had like four charge cords. Damn. Because I went out and bought new charge cords because I forgot them. Yeah, I've got two for the Apple Watch. They can't just make them universal, right? <laughs> no maybe someday maybe i don't know someday oh but that would make it far easier for us to avoid lock-in you know getting locked into one brand if right. they all use the same thing yeah right looks well, like the iphone still uses lightning on the bottom but the other phones that are coming out are usb-c and then 
like my MacBook is USB-C. There are iPads that are USB-C. And so it's a mess. I I don't know what that means, but I'm just going to keep nodding and smiling (laughs) like I know what that means. The thing that goes in the hole in the bottom of your phone is different. Okay. On different Apple devices and then iPhone versus Android phone and all that. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's a mess, Kate. It is. It's a mess. And then you have iMessage where you and I see blue bubbles from each other. But then if an Android person shows up in our message thread, then it turns green. Kind of a gross looking green as if if they're almost trying to shame you for communicating with an Android user. It's weird. I wouldn't call it gross. It's green. You don't think that green is specifically like that blue? I'm looking at it now. I know. I'm going to pull it up on mine. The blue is a very pleasant blue. The green. I don't think it's gross green. The green looks like puke. Oh, my puke never. I think you need to see a doctor. Okay, not puke. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for my eyes or other things for your puke if your puke is oh. that color you got problems okay well, you got trouble puking in general is not typically i mean that's a sign you might need to see a doctor in the first place but that could be a more pleasant green don't you think well don't you want it to be bright so you can see it that's harder i think it's harder to read the text when it's a brighter green like, mm. look at that blue look how much darker that blue is and how much easier it is to read the text on that i mean I don't really notice okay. a difference. Maybe it's, maybe it's just me. Might be. Either way, you know they're using those green bubbles to shame you, whether you think they're ugly or not, right? You think so? Maybe not, but I know this was a meme. I know this was a meme for a while where people were like, oh, green bubbles, see you later. <laughs> not going to talk to that friend anymore. Do people really do that? I don't know these people in real life, but I know oh, okay. I have seen this on social media before where people... Okay will make a point to say, you know, like, oh, my friend's bubbles turn green, so that relationship's Mm. over. I'd never talk to my brother and sister-in-law ever again if that were the case, but Uh, because they are, they're anti-Apple. That's too bad. Yeah, the biggest issue with the deal is the the group threads, right? If you want to react to one and you're like, oh, I love that comment. And then the whole group of people, if there's one Android on there, the whole people sees that Kate laughed at, and then it quotes the text message that you laughed at. So stupid. Yeah, but I do that on purpose. Oh, to to mock them? A little bit. Okay. Not mock them. Not really mock them, but like, if you had an Apple, you wouldn't get this message right now. <laughs> yeah, my message is great. But it's not really towards my sister-in-law as much as it's towards my brother. Because he knows everything. So. Oh, is that how that works? Yeah. No. Uh, your sister-in-law being your brother's wife. Wife. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's happy with his Google. I'll let him be happy with his Google. That's very kind of you, Kate. I know. And I'm fine with people doing that too. Yeah. We're not going to cut them out of our lives. That's oh, that's so sweet of you. Yeah. And just in time for the holidays. <laughs> just in time. Avuvari. Matt, do you participate in any of the uh, Christmas cliches that we see in Hallmark movies? Do I participate in any? Yeah, like baking cookies or making gingerbread houses, Mm. picking out the perfect tree, caroling, ice skating, snowball fights, kissing under the mistletoe. Wow, I love the way you're delivering that. I know. That was a good little cliche commercial. (laughs) Outside of my miniature Christmas trees, the two foot $20 Christmas trees I got from Target. Yeah. Of which I have three, and I made sure to bring one of them, the one that's outside in the other day. Good. So it wouldn't good. take off on me. The irreplaceable $20 Christmas tree there. Uh, I decorated one of those trees. Did I tell you that my mom sent me a bunch of trimmings to put on the tree? Yes, but okay. did you turn on Christmas music while you decorated the tree and have some hot cocoa? Well, I decorated the tree on YouTube, so I did do a live stream on it. Okay. And I was too paranoid to use the versions that had Christmas music on them because I was worried those might be copyrighted, and then that they would take down my video. Yeah, Mariah Carey's going to come after your ass. Right, exactly. Man. So I opted to just go with the fireplace with no music behind it. You know, so you're hearing the, the fiery okay. noises. Okay. Not good enough? I mean, were you feeling the spirit? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's all that counts. I wish I had a Santa hat, though, in retrospect. I wish I had had a Santa hat. Oh, man. Just because I was on camera, though. That would have been perfect. Yeah. Uh, How about you? 
I was going to say, yeah, I haven't done any baking or anything like that. I'm kind of, kind of. I mean, it's, it's frankly almost miraculous that I got trees. Yeah, we did a lot of baking last year. And last year, I'm not. It's yeah. You're not due yet for this year. I'm just Too saying, early. I don't know that it's going to happen this year. Oh, yeah. I did a lot of baking and I did a, a lot of gifting of the goodies. And I, I don't think that's going to happen this year. Why? Time. Time, time ticking. ticking. You, time, time ticking. You guys hitting up more spots or just busy there, busier this year? I know. Just busier this year, it feels like. Oh, what about your neighbors? Chad and Anna, Gene and Kim, Kevin and Valerie, Mark and Gail. What do you mean? Are Should you, I ask them what they're doing? Or No. Have, they, have you gotten any treats from any of them yet? Maybe too early, huh? It might be too early. Yeah, I haven't gotten treats. If if I did do treats, that's who it would be for. I got a little carried away. Like I was shipping treats last year. Oh yeah, that's right. Because you yeah, uh, you even hooked me up with uh, treats here at the uh, at the radio station. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you really made it rain cookies. If you're giving cookies to your coworkers and not I just know. throwing a pile on the break room table, that's pretty impressive. Right. They were that's above and they beyond. were individually wrapped. They were nice and little treat bags. Yeah, yeah I just. I don't see it happening this year. If I do treats, it'll be for the neighbors, but it just feels like a lot, Matt. Feels like a lot. So you're at least going to do some token baking with the with the girls, I would assume, or um, we do have some gingerbread house kits that oh. we're kind of leaning towards, but I feel like that's a father daughter activity versus a whole family activity. Really, for your particular family or in general? Yes. For us. Oh, okay. Because it drives me crazy. I can't stand it. Well, plus, Monty's probably going to make a more structurally sound gingerbread house. Probably. And yeah. be way more calm. It'll be more fun. <laughs> Do you like gingerbread? No. Okay, I thought no. maybe you did. I thought maybe you didn't. No. But these uh, also are gingerbread houses that are not for consumption. And I'm pretty sure the oh. candy like will break your teeth. So if anything, we'll have like snacks and stuff while they're decorating. So that they don't eat the things they're supposed to be decorating with. So the pre-cooked pieces? Oh, yeah. It's a kit. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said kit. I figured that was it, but I didn't know if they sent molds or something like that. Pretty sure that the gingerbread's not supposed to be consumed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? No, it's just for decoration. Okay. It's just to put that stuff together and throw it away in a couple of days. It's not how everybody else does it. I I don't know. I've never. Do you ha- eat off of it? I don't know. That's a good question. I never have. I, I've I never, never have. I've never made a gingerbread house though. Yeah, I've decorated a gingerbread person before though. When the girls were in kindergarten, they did a little activity where they had like a milk carton, where they put graham crackers. They glued the graham crackers onto the milk carton. Okay. For the gingerbread house. And then they had this like huge buffet of candy and frosting that they could decorate their house. But it wasn't for consumption. Of course, they did eat as they, you know. Oh, yeah. Put things together. But after it was complete, they didn't eat it. Because there's too much glue involved. Probably. <laughs> yeah, if you use Elmer's. We've talked about Elmer's recently, actually. It's non-toxic. Maybe there's like an Elmer's frosting out there. Ooh, that's a good idea. Is it a glue? Is it a frosting? It's both. Giving away free ideas again here on Matt and Kate. Damn. Take it and run, Elmer. Take it and run. <laughs> Elmer. <laughs> and you're indicating that Elmer is still there contemplating different glue products. Hmm, what should I do? Is Elmer an actual person, you think? Is Elmer the, um, is it a cow on the glue? Uh, yeah. What's the animal? I think so. I think it is a cow. Yeah. Let me, let me look it up because it's been a bit Why since... Why is it a cow, by the way? I don't know. Because don't they always say they're going to send the horses to the glue factory? They do, but in this country, we're not fans of horses being used for anything other than riding on majestically. Or competitively. Or competitively. Yeah, yeah that's clearly uh, a bull, actually, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Washable clear glue, Kate. is the one that showed up when I t- searched for Elmer's on the image search here. That's what's on the school supplies list, Matt. Washable clear glue? Yep. Don't huh. bring that stuff that's not washable. We don't want it. 
you can get from walmart.com Elmer's all purpose glue sticks. 12 count for 11.99 buck a pop. Yeah, I should have enough glue sticks to last me through the school year. I buy pretty heavy at the beginning. Yeah, you don't want to go back. No. And you're like, what, is glue going to go out of style? Right. Probably How not. How have you used this much glue? It's only December. Yeah, you're right. Elmer the Bull. Elmer the Bull. I'm now at Wikipedia. Although Elmer the Bull did not become the marketing symbol for Borden's, I guess that was the original name of the brand, Borden's adhesive line until 1951. He had been a familiar household name since the 1940s. Elmer's blah, 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 blah. Advertising team that developed Elsie the Cow, the well-known bovine marketing symbol for the dairy division. Interesting. Hmm. Learning about Elmer's here today. So I guess Looky there. Elmer wasn't a person. So this cow, maybe this bull is turning horses into glue. It's an image for you. No? Kind of sounds like uh, anarchy. I thought you were on our side. No, get to the glue factory. All right, so maybe you put together a prefab <laughs> gingerbread house. Uh, maybe not cooking very much. Any other, as you mentioned, cliche Christmas activities that you've done so far or plan to do before you hit the road for the holiday? They were supposed to, the girls were supposed to do caroling with the Girl Scouts. Oh. Yeah, but it was bad weather. Oh. Ice skating. Oh. I know that Elliot would love to go ice skating, but. We're not real comfortable with her ice skating with her knee, even mm-hmm. in a brace. So we're oh. just not even mentioning that. Uh, snowball fights. I mean, bring on the snow, I guess. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last check, they're thinking, not going to happen. The white not Christmas. Not going to happen. And I don't think we've had any accumulating snow at all this year. Am I right in that? I, mm, eh, my brain can't quite process time like it could two years ago, Kate, so... I know. This winter, last winter. Oh, I don't care. Do you do you care? Are you delighted when there's a white Christmas skate? As long as I don't have to drive anywhere, I don't care right. if it snows. But I'm not a big snow driver. Yeah, I agree. If I'm going to be at someone else's place for a few days, I'm fine with it turning into a white Christmas when I'm there. Mm-hmm. And then there's enough time to clear the roads. Then yeah. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas so long as it doesn't affect my travel. Exactly. And it's yeah. not so much that I don't feel comfortable driving in the snow. I just know how people turn into idiots driving in the snow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's my biggest concern there. I'm okay with me getting us places. I'm not okay with other people on the road. <laughs> God, I tell you what, there was uh, the other day with that ridiculous wind. Oh, yeah. A uh, semi got blown over. I think it was north of us. I think it was near Mound City. And mm. the driver was ejected because he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Oh, come on, buddy. It's like, oh, man, it's bad enough not wearing your seatbelt. In general, you should really buckle up. It's really not that uncomfortable and it's, you know, saves lives. But when there's like signs everywhere and you can feel the wind blowing you all over the place, I would think at least that would prompt you to buckle up. Right, right. But whatever. Yeah, from Minnesota to New Mexico. Crazy winds. Yeah, weird. Not nuts? Yes, it's been a, a very weird last week of weather with all the uh, tornadoes as well. Mm-hmm. So hopefully things settle down or maybe this is the way things are forever. I don't know. No more white Christmases, tornado Christmases. Or, or the th- we might get a blizzard on Christmas. You think? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, not this Christmas. But I think we could get he- heavier snowfall than we've had in the past. Maybe, maybe. Someday. I don't know. Someday, yeah. If it shifts right. I don't know. What was it, like 72 the other day? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and Elliot wanted to wear shorts to practice, <laughs> basketball practice. Uh-huh. And she's like, Mom, it's 70 degrees. And I said, Elliot, it's the middle of December. No. Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, really? No. The calendar overrides it? You come out of practice, it's not going to be 70 degrees. It's going to be cold, oh. and I don't have time for you to get sick. So... Put on your pants. <laughs> Put on your pants. Put on your pants, kid. Uh, yeah, she was not happy with me. Yes, yeah, so... I got over it. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, was it a week ago? I forget what the... It was... I think it was a Friday. I went into the liquor store, and they had their front door wide open, right? Mm-hmm. And as I was checking out, I go, open door in December, you know, to the 
I feel very comfortable at this liquor store. Okay, thank you. Uh, to, <laughs> to the cashier, and she goes, don't complain when it's snowing in May. And I went, okay, fair enough. No, don't tell me what to do. I will complain about snow in May. It's ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> we can't have it both ways? No? E- enjoy the, the... We can't enjoy December and... Enjoy the 70s in the middle of December and yeah. the complainy face when it's 30 and a foot of snow on the ground in May? Monty's birthday is May 1st. And I said, how many times has it snowed on your birthday? And he said, a couple. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's wrong. <laughs> that's wrong. That is wrong. Unacceptable. Matt, have you heard about the cream cheese shortage around the country? Cream cheese. Yeah, this may be. There's been so many shortages of things. It's hard to keep track of it. And what's going right. on with the cream cheese? What's happened? There's no cream cheese. <laughs> there's um, no cream cheese. There's no cream cheese. Yeah. It's obviously because of the pandemic. Demand yeah. is up 18% since COVID hit. I'm guessing because more people are cooking at home and baking. That makes sense. Supply chain issues also a factor. So Kraft, who makes the Philadelphia cream cheese, they're going to pay you $20 to not make cheesecake for Christmas. Really? Okay. How's that work? Okay. You need to go to spreadthefeeling.com. Spreadthefeeling.com. All right. I'm going there. Yep. Reserve your spot. And they're going to give away $18,000. Whoops. Scratch that. They're going to give away 18,000 vouchers to people. Oh, like to get cream cheese in the future? Nope. You have to buy a different dessert or the ingredients for a different dessert between now and Christmas. Save your receipts. And then on the 28th of December, submit that receipt and they'll give you a $20 digital reward. (laughs) <laughs> so they're going to give you $20 to make chocolate chip cookies instead of cheesecake. Interesting. Yeah, reserve starting on 12-17, which is today, and 12-18 at noon Eastern time, so 11 Central each day. Be one of the first to reserve your spot to claim a limited dessert reservation. Huh. Bye. Once your dessert reservation is confirmed with a unique one-time use link, and to send to you, do not share. Buy any dessert with dated receipt between 1217 and 1224. Huh. And then starting on 1228, use your unique link to submit your dessert receipt. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work, Kate. For a $20. For $20? It's just a couple of clicks. Okay. Uploading a picture. If you can't spread Philly, spread the feeling. I like that. <laughs> spread the feeling. Spreadthefeeling.com. And then uh, reserve your spot starting at 11 a.m. this morning. So I recommend set a timer, set an alarm on your phone for 10.55 today and then maybe again tomorrow if you can't score it. Thanks, Kate. This is an interesting uh, stunt they're doing. It is an interesting stunt, right? Now, do they say on this this website directly, do they admit that it's, oh, yeah, you may not be able to find Philly to make a cheesecake. So get any other dessert on us. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, I started getting hungry for things with cream cheese on them. I know. <laughs> we should go buy some cream cheese and contribute to the shortage, Kate. Well, but I don't buy Philly cream cheese. Oh, yeah? What kind so do you buy? So does that mean that there's not a cream cheese shortage just for the name brand? <laughs> oh, you buy the knockoff? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. That's probably what I would do, too. I haven't bought cream cheese in a while. But it's solid. Yeah, me neither. Solid food item. I had brownies with cream cheese in them once. It was actually really good. Oh, I bet. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Years ago. Spaghetti with cream cheese in it. Have not tried that. How do you do that? That's pretty good. You just mix the cream cheese into your sauce. Okay. So it's a little bit creamier God. sauce. Oh, man. Not enough calories in your spaghetti? There's some cream cheese in there. Sounds great. It is good. It is good. All right, Kate, so you sent me this Christmas movies by state deal? Yes. Uh, What is going on with this? I don't understand it. All right, so I'll just cut to the chase here. It's controversial, right? Yeah. So the Christmas movie by state for the state of Missouri, The Christmas Chronicles. 
which is a good movie. I don't know if I know what that is. It's the one with Kurt Russell oh. that came out two years ago. And then the sequel has Goldie Hawn as Mrs. Claus. That's right. You were just talking about this one the other day. Right. All right. Kansas is Elf, which makes more sense. Mm-hmm. And then some of these other ones, like Wyoming and the Christmas Chronicles, comma, Edward Scissorhands. Edward Scissorhands, a uh, Christmas, Christmas movie? I guess that was a tie. I mean, we watched it in the last three months, and I know that there are Christmas lights in it, and they celebrate the Christmas party, but is it a Christmas movie? I mean, didn't we have this kind of discussion about Die Hard? Is it a Christmas movie? Right. Yeah. Whereas some of these are just movies that don't seem like Colorado is Klaus, 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 with a K, Klaus, Klaus. I think that's a scary movie, isn't it? Oh, that seems like that, now that you mention it, yeah. I'll look it up while you talk about something else with this. Well, Montana is trading places. <laughs> right. Okay. Is that the Eddie Murphy movie? Uh, maybe. It might be right. And Dan Aykroyd? Klaus, the film Klaus is uh, Jason Schwartzman, J.K. Simmons, Rashida Jones. Uh, oh, I was way off. Norm MacDonald. Not scary. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Norm MacDonald in his final film role released in his lifetime. Oh, but yeah, a lot of these. I Krampus. Don't know. How did they do this? That's the scary one, right? Which one? Krampus. No, I don't. I'm not familiar with that one either. Yeah, that's the scary one. Jesus, Mary and Joseph and all his carpenter friends. That's a <laughs> scary picture right there. Louisiana last Christmas. What's that? Which is also Connecticut. George Michael documentary. <laughs> I can't tell if you're messing with me or not. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Edward Scissorhands is on here multiple times. Oh, yeah, there's Krampus, like you mentioned, Vermont. There's Krampus listed. Uh, Home Alone makes a good showing across the uh, the states as well. So there you go. Most popular holiday movies by a state in the United States. And I'm not sure the how they how they figured this out. Uh, Prefly looked at search trends to 115 of the highest rated and highest grossing holiday movies of all time. Then narrowed down the list to the top 25 most searched for films and evaluated how popular they were in each state. They found that Americans love The Nightmare Before Christmas and Home Alone. And there's also some wild choices. Hmm. Yeah, like have you ever heard of the movie The Happiest Season? Or Happiest Season? No. Yeah. What a fail. There's Four Christmases, Jingle All the Way, White Christmas, Polar <laughs> Express is not on there more. That's kind of surprising. You know, I almost watched Jingle All the Way the other night. You almost did. Yeah. I almost watched it just to hate watch isn't the right word, but to laugh at it. Okay. And then I thought, well, that's not actually really worth my time to watch what I think is actually a bad movie, right? I think it's terrible, right? That's the impression I get. Yeah, it's real bad. Real bad. Quite unfortunate, yeah. Yeah. 